Oh my gosh, the weather today is awful. I had to get a cab. Uh, I have no idea what I'm doing or where I'm going. Excuse me, how do you get up to there, please? Just stay, just stay there. So if you get up the stairs, it brings you out to the next level. Oh, thank you. Sorry. Um, yeah, sorry. Thank you. Um, I'm just so late. I'm supposed to be there at 8 today. This week, it's warm. I'm out of breath and shattered. But hopefully, today is the day where I get shit sorted. I should have to get something sorted. I don't know if you all can hear me. I hope you can. And I <laughs> haven't received the pre outpatient letter. So I don't even know what to expect. I haven't eaten anything. Um, just in case. And I am about to take out all my jewelry. I haven't got the nails on. Yeah, I'm here, let's see. No one's even in the reception. I, I have an appointment. I, sorry, I have a... Oh, that's slippery. I have an appointment. Yeah. Um, it was at 8.30. Okay. I was stuck in traffic. Because I didn't get any of the, you know, the pre-appointment letters. Nothing came. Okay. And what they're doing is injections, nerve inject. I moved it from one screen to the other. When I move it to the second screen, it doesn't retain some of that information. But I can find out for you. It's not a problem. Thank you. Second screen doesn't do that, but it's mostly sort of nerve blocks. Mm -hmm. uh, where an injection is, if a yeah. nerves are causing problems in a in a bone area, they, it may to kind of deaden the nerve. But okay. And I'll, I'll find out for you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Just follow me. Yeah? Even he doesn't know. Oh my god, this is so scary. Um, I got a phone call. To oh, tell yeah. me that this is the time available, all right, and, then, all right, yeah, and then I received a text message yeah. um, that just has to stand the staff because the lady said that the full letter would get yeah. sent, and the full letter didn't get sent. Okay, so I don't. I'll find out for you. Don't worry about it. Just take the seat. So just here. Yes, please. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's a nerve block around somewhere in the pelvic area, yeah? Mm -hmm. So it's an injection. Okay. And it's been done by... It's been done by... I'm just looking for the... I'm sorry. The Qatari is doing it. Okay. Hello, good morning. I suppose you have a question. Those are questions. Yeah, because I didn't get any information. I don't know like what I'm if I was supposed to eat, if I wasn't, so I didn't eat. Um, oh, okay. 
which is fine. So, but are you happy to see the procedure? The, I knew it was today. I just didn't know any. Like what kind of it? It's fine. Yeah. Okay, so my name is May. I'm one of the nurses here. We can just go inside mm -hmm. to admit you mm -hmm. and we'll wait for Dr. Katari. Okay. Okay, and then she will see you and she will consent you for all the for all the, for the procedure and that's the best time for you to ask questions. Oh, so okay. she will explain everything. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's everything. fine. Sorry. It's fine. I think it's being done here, but there's like a room full of like six chairs. I don't know what's going on. A few moments later. Oh my god, I feel so dizzy. I feel gonna pass out. Um, I wasn't allowed to record in there. But, um, I feel internally numb. Okay, so, yeah. <sighs> now is not the time to talk, so when I get better, I'll, I'll um. Does that say Reese? Yeah. I'll talk to you when I get home. Hours later. Oh my gosh, so I'm home, obviously. What's that song? Soon as I get home. As soon as I got home, I went to sleep. So last night I was so anxious, I was tossing and turning, and I fell asleep 45 minutes. Like I was drifting off to sleep about 45 minutes before I was due to leave the house not even before i was due to wake up before i was due to leave the house so like today was just nuts and obviously i don't know if you heard in my the previous message the uh, clips but before you have an operation uh or a procedure should i say whether it's outpatient or like day patient or like you're s submitted admitted even into the hospital you get a letter detailing everything nil by mouth if you need to do that if you need to take certain medication if you need to do certain preparations someone has to be with you at school you etc etc and then a list of frequently asked questions plus whatever it is that de they're detailing whatever it is that you so yeah they did all of that the, um, I, I didn't get that sorry so last night i had dinner didn't eat anything after like about eight o'clock eight thirty ish no water i had a like a hot drink from it to bed when i woke up this morning i was so hungry so so hungry well i didn't wake up well, I, I feel like i took a 10 minute nap and then um it's just my dog fluff in there and then um yeah so i was bare questions the ladies reassured me what was happening i was just da -da -da. but because i didn't know previously like i'm terrified of needles absolutely terrified so obviously now i get in there and i lay on the table um as soon as i laid on the table like i burst into tears i was shaking i was it was awful like i'm so scared of needles i know i have pierces and tattoos but it, i don't know i just get this really bad sensory overload when something pierces my skin it's hard to explain I was crying on the table, the lady was just holding my hand, she said, it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay. And then they did the local anesthetic that stung like a motherfucker. And it wasn't quite numb before they um, injected, like they pierced my skin. 
but after they had pierced the top part of my skin with that main needle, um, couldn't feel anything. But as soon as I sat up, I was like this. And I thought maybe it's because I sat up so quickly and I haven't eaten. You know, us anemic people, we like to be seeing stars when we stand up too quickly. And then um, I come out of the room and obviously my little recovery bit was like next door. As soon as I sat down, I, I was like, I don't know what happened, something happened. But it felt like I was going to pass out. The nurse looked at me. She reclined a chair, did this put blood pressure thing and I was just like, I can't. And then I think I was recording then. I don't quite remember. I was still a bit dizzy when I was recording. Um, but yeah, it's a bit sore. Um, it's got like a burning kind of sensation. In the, the site now and it's a, it's a bit swollen as well. Uh, my legs started to go a bit numb. It's still a bit numb, like inside of my thigh. I can't explain it because they injected a nerve. So like the inside of my thigh is a bit numb. Like internally, <laughs> I can't explain what I'm trying to say. Like if you felt that, then you know what I'm talking about. But um, it's so far so good. I literally came home and slept. Oh, someone's at the door. So today is International Women's Day. Per. Um, I don't know how was it been that two weeks since my injections. I got really sick, I'm just getting over a chest infection. So if you hear a little wheeze every now and again, excuse that. Um, what's the update? I had an update. I had it all planned out in my head, and I just can't remember what it was. Uh, so I am um, like it's enough time for basically the injection to settle in. So it and do its thing, whatever you know. What I'm trying to say, like, to start kicking in and working efficiently. The, I would say the pain has decreased by about that was such an ugly face I pulled <laughs> 60 to 70 percent, which is what the, the doctor surgeon person was aiming for, anyway. That's what she said. Um, there's some days because, like. I don't feel as much pain and I'm not concentrating, I'm not bloody passing out because of the pain. <clears throat> There's some days where like the pain pushes through, if that makes sense. <laughs> I don't know if it makes sense. Like it it peaks, like it just shoots like like bitch, I'm her kind of thing. Um and I'm like, oh, but then I realised how much pain I was actually in before having the injection. And to me, that is so mind boggling. Like, it's so crazy. Because I was really living a shit quality of life. And I'm there firming it and putting a straight face on. And because I was always told, like, there's nothing wrong with you. Or you get over it, you're exaggerating. And I'm like, okay, maybe I'm just being a wimp kind of thing. Obviously, that was like back in the day. Not so much now, because people around me kind of understand. Well, yeah, they kind of understand like what's going on. They don't understand fully unless they're going through it. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sinking further and further into the bed. Like, let me sit up like I've got some sense. So yeah, so I've just been chilling, um, slowly going back to work. And, you know, I've got a different job elsewhere so anyway that's not the point of this video so today obviously like i said it's international women's day it's like one o'clock no 11 o'clock sorry in the morning I look dusty i don't have my wig on my edges aren't done this is how i'm coming to you you know um but yeah, I wanted to do a post on Instagram, but every year when it comes around, because obviously March is like endometriosis awareness month, I write something and then I go to post it and then I get so anxious and scary. And I just delete it. And I think I was on it this year. I was really on it. Like I had the post, I had the pictures, like carousel or whatever they're called on Instagram. And this video... 
it's supposed to be up before the end of March, but knowing me, <laughs> I'm a chicken out and not do it. <laughs> but you will see eventually, obviously, whenever you see it, you see it. But just know this is the date that I recorded it and the month that it was intended for. <clears throat> so yeah, but um, I think for me, like, there's just so much going on right now with women's health and women period and you know like studies and statistics and changing of medical literature and definitions and <clears throat> goodness knows what else As apologies i need some coffee yes this is iced coffee that's this big mind your business But yeah, and I felt like, not that I didn't want to get cancelled, but it's kind of that kind of sentiment where I'm speaking from a biological woman's point of view who has suffered a black woman at that, be it, I'm blending in with my t-shirt right now, <laughs> a, a black woman's point of view dealing with medical neglect or medical racism or whatever it is you want to call it i deal with discrimination basically when it comes to her health issues and obviously i don't want to take away from anyone else's plight and anyone else's struggles and you know everyone's pain's not comparable and all of that jazz but i really wanted to say something oh my god that wasp is massive i'm so glad my window's closed okay <laughs> I really wanted to say something, very much something on, like from my point of view, but I just, I don't wanna say I chicken out, I just thought now is not the time because I don't want the important, not the important message, but the important information that I have to put across. I don't want that to be overshadowed by BS. And it seems like every year so far that I've gone to post something, there's some, there's some BS in the mix, like, why is that i must admit though even though i still have issues with the forums and all of this other stuff and i keep saying i'll talk about it in another video but every time i go to start recording i get really angry <laughs> and i just have to stop because that's not me or my mind set anymore if that makes sense like i'm not really an angry person anymore and i don't really want to put myself in that in that position to slip back but um i must admit there was like a, a channel 4 documentary about endometriosis and there was i think there was one black lady and one asian lady and the rest were white ladies and i was like finally like some representation it's not enough but it's a start kind of thing um more people i think are starting to be aware of it and fibromyalgia i don't know if i said that correctly <clears throat> and all that jazz but anyway talking of fibromyalgia and the pain and that fibromyalgia is to do with pain there's so much medical definitions that i know of my condition is just it's crazy but what i have noticed actually talking of pain and, and the injection i'm all over the place i'm so sorry this is i'll try and edit it to make it make sense so now I've had the injection, the nerve blocking stuff, things, which by the way is a temporary fix. Um, I've noticed the fatigue part of my condition a lot more. Like before, like if you ask anybody that knows me, like personally, personally, I'm always tired, I'm always sleepy. Oh, Reese, how are you? Oh, I'm tired, man. Always, no matter, like, if I've had 12 hours sleep, 2 hours sleep, I am always, always, always tired. And I just always feel exhausted and run down. And I'm, I was thinking in my brain that it was because I was, my, I was, I, me, my body, brain, whatever, was focusing so hard on dealing with the pain and controlling the pain and 
try not to pass out like coping basically with the amount of pain that i was in every day obviously some days worse than others that it was just making me tired but now the pain isn't as like the pain levels aren't as high <laughs> i've noticed that the fatigue wasn't because of my body coping with the pain it was i am fatigued with a capital g <laughs> so i had to go back to the, the doctors and because i'm starting to know that notice that like i write a diary basically not a diary like a little notepad and just write things down that change day by day so i can keep track or i always have the notes up in my phone if i don't have the diary paper thing with me like i get a brain fog um my speech is terrible. I just thought my speech was bad because I can't hear to the ex as well as everybody else who is hearing. I wear a hearing aid. I'm deaf. Well, not fully deaf, but I'm, I'm partially deaf. So I always thought that... Well, I was, oh, fucking hell, look at me. Talking of speech and I can't speak. I always... No, not I always. I thought that my trouble with my speech was because my hearing is deteriorating like it, i was I'm, I'm partially deaf but it's getting progressively worse <clears throat> so i thought because if you notice deaf deaf people can't some deaf people can't speak enunciate no they can speak like some deaf people can't enunciate as well as hearing people fully functioning hearing people because they don't hear if that makes sense i can't explain what i'm trying to say like even like certain words I've been pronouncing wrong because I hear it differently. Do you know what I mean? No? Yes? Not that you guys want to answer me. But <laughs> anyway. So there's a lot of things I've noticed and um, <coughs> I have appointments to go back and try and figure out how to cope. But they were talking about putting... It's like antidepressants or anti-anxiety medication to cope with those symptoms. But obviously... Well, I suffer from anxiety. That's a whole other topic for a different day. But I'm I'm not depressed, so I'm I'm a bit dubious as to taking medication for something else, and the side effect is to help cope with what I'm dealing with. If that makes sense. So yeah, I've got to look into that. It's a bit scurry, but uh, oh, I beg I need to go put a wig on and look presentable. So yeah, so. The uh, the medication is a bit of a scary one for me. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I was on antidepressants at a point in my life. Oh god, not me. It was starting to wheeze, and like years and years ago, for something completely unrelated to my medical issues. I was going through some things, man. I was going through some things. Um, but I didn't like the way they made me feel, and if that was the feeling that I'd got when I was actually going through some shit and needed the medication to stable my brain um i'm worried what it will actually do when i am mentally sound well no i'm a little bit insane but in terms of you know depression and stuff like that i am mentally sound and i don't want that to be affected because i've worked so hard to get to the mental space that I am at now and today and have been for a while <clears throat> that I don't want to is my elbow dry why is it so nobbly <laughs> um yeah I don't want it to affect or put me in a relapse or whatever the case may be I just I just I I'm too scary to even find out the possibility do you know what I mean so um we're gonna talk further about that they still don't know when they can give me another laparoscopy, um, which is a bit jarring. Uh, what else? That's it, I think. I think I'm, I'm feeling fine. You know, I'm trying to not let it affect me. It did get me a little bit down for a while. And obviously certain things have happened. And my body just doesn't want to cooperate. And I get frustrated with myself because I'm like, can you just go and do what i've told you to do legs work brain work with the legs and my body is like no bitch you need to sit down take time 
let us heal and then we move on so yeah this is a the long fight that i'm fighting like i said this this vlog thing was a bit all over the place but that's just the reality of having a medical condition like mine it is literally all over the place one day you're fine the next three days you're in the gutter and then two days after that it's like nothing ever happened it's so up and down i've got motion sickness <laughs> but if you've made it this far i'm gonna stop rambling now um i'm gonna go take a nap because you guys tired and international women's day is all about us so i'm gonna take care of me and i'm gonna take a nap after i've had my iced coffee doesn't make sense but whatever um don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video hopefully the next video will be a bit more cheery got some things planned and yeah see you mm -hmm.